Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you've watched gay porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped you get off. Hmm. Um, before we start this episode, I really quickly just want to um, say goodbye to um, a friend and co-worker who just lost his battle of cancer, um, Luke Harding, who um, who first... Uh, who graced my presence first in 2013 when I was at um, Dark Alley. Um, walked in for an interview. Probably walked out three hours later because uh, he was just larger than life. All he did was talk and I couldn't shut him the fuck up. No. Uh, but an absolute sweetheart. Um, you know, the last time I spoke to him, I was in New Orleans and we were going to do an interview for the podcast regarding um regarding his fight with cancer and stuff and and it's very unfortunate um it's always sad um in any sense when it's when it's cancer it's it's sad it's just a sad thing altogether it's just it breaks my heart because he's so he was so young and so full of life but one thing i will say is uh he lived the life that he wanted to live the way he wanted to as true as he can be to himself and he probably lived more lives in his young life than a lot of people do in their whole life. So um, with that, I just want to say goodbye to, to Luke Harding um, with a quick moment of silence. And I'll just add that uh, he probably would, <laughs> if he was with us, uh, that moment of silence would not have happened. <laughs> um, so my guest this week is, uh, somebody I've wanted to get on the show for a minute because, you know, we, we knew each other before, uh, he got into porn and then all of a sudden he was a porn star and I'm like, wait a minute, when did this happen? So, um, my guest is, uh, he's now an international porn star. He's up and coming, not even up and coming. He's just rising. Like I'm, I'm absolutely amazed at how much stuff he's done so far. And we just did a suck scene yesterday with Joel someone. And we also did a fuck scene today for my motel movie, which is coming out. Um, so please, uh, help me welcome Julian Torres. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you. For yeah. Having me. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you moved to, uh, Washington, Washington DC, DC, which is, <laughs> yes. I fucking love Washington DC. It's an absolutely it. beautiful, I don't like what's going on in Washington DC at the moment, mm. but that's okay. You know, yeah, exactly. it's still, it's, it's got a lot of history, uh, and it's beautiful. No. It's absolutely beautiful. Definitely a change from Florida. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I really needed a change. Yeah. So since I met you, mm -hmm. uh, you've become a porn star, as I mentioned. Uh, you are a content creator as well. Yes. That was quick. First of all, um, um, the the first one I started working with was um, Bait Buddies. That okay. was actually oh, really? my first, okay. first, very first scene. Interesting. Right? Um, and the thing is that I was doing all the of the just for fans thing mm -hmm. but i was covering my my face um because i i had a regular you know nine to five nine to five job and um i didn't want anyone to know that i was there mm -hmm. i was always a pig and i was always into you know some weird stuff yeah what's your twitter <laughs> handle my twitter handle is furry stud with a double f okay so it would be f furry stud what does that uh, double F stand for, huh? Uh, that's that's fucking. Okay. <laughs> no, I only see that because you're like, oh, I was doing dirty stuff, you know? Yeah. I, the thing is that, you know, we always, as human beings, we always have this, you know, natural instinct. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to explore them um, ever since I got into um, this industry mm -hmm. um, freely. Like... Um, I feel free to express myself the way, you know, um, I never thought I could. Um, I got to do stuff in, in Europe and Barcelona with women, with transgender to um, men all at the same time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so you've done like you did straight porn. You did. I don't know. I don't know how I would define that. Yeah. Because it was all, all over the place. Okay. It was, all, it was a little yeah. everywhere. Pansexual ex porn. Exactly. How about that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. You know, it happened just very quick. Mm -hmm. um, I did my first porn shoot in November 2018. Um, 
So once I did that shoot, I was a little impressed because uh, the director said, yeah, this is a people that we need in the industry. So I'm like, what do you mean? I, I'm only doing this because um, I really need the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was really struggling with money back then um, because of a family, of a family situation. Um, and then he said, well, we're going to schedule, you know, some shoots for you. Um, I was working nine to five. So I, I was scheduled for like six shoots and I could only do two of them because of a work situation. So I decided to quit in January um, because I was making in one scene, I was making um, what I was making at my regular job in a week, oh, wow. working 60 hours a day. Oh, and I was geez. a manager. Okay. So um, yeah, it was a pretty quick transition. Mm -hmm. And then Right after that, um, I was back then with my um, ex-boyfriend. Um, we both did a pretty good job just creating content and mm -hmm. all of that. And we were all over the place doing two CDs um, a month and, you know, getting to meet a lot of people. Um, and it was pretty cool. It was mm -hmm. a great experience. And, um, yeah, we had a lot of fun. And That's actually how I met you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know that you guys were doing a lot of scenes together and stuff. Yeah, actually, 90% of the scenes yeah. um, were together. Um, and it was great. People loved it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was real. So that's actually, I think that's what's important. Or actually, that's what I think I'm trying to put out there. Mm -hmm. That the porn that I do is real mm -hmm. um, and um, not entirely 100 staged um because i'm a real person yeah you know? let me ask you being a real person what yeah. uh what kind of fetishes are you into oh my god so <laughs> <laughs> let's get real <laughs> yes so uh, let's start you know classifying them mm. so in regards to like well i know you're into fisting yes okay i mean that, that's the first thing um mm -hmm. i'm into fisting very much a lot um I'm into rubber, mm -hmm. uh, leather. I'm more of, even though I have a lot of rubber, I'm more of a leather guy. Okay. Um, I'm very much into the that uh, leather scene, like all geared up. Um, but more of the, you know, kind of the the old style, like the Tom of Finland, very yes. like piggy style, not looking good. Like cigar glasses yes. and all that, but not not all about like because nowadays I feel like it's all about looking pretty. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, all about that, you know, twisted leather thing. Yeah, you like a man that looks real, like a real man, right? exactly. And leather exactly. and just okay. Yes, some daddies. You like some daddies, right? Because you oh, mentioned yeah, something about time. daddies before. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and then you almost accosted my last podcast guest. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, <laughs> Now, let me ask you a question. When was the first time? Because um, I do have uh, history recording fisting. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my favorite okay. because I do it. When I look at it, I look at it as technical. Yeah. Um, but I'm always curious. Mm -hmm. Right. So where, where, when was the first time you thought, wow, this is something that I'm really into? What was it? There so um, the thing is that... Um, um, the porn that I used to jerk off to mm -hmm. um, was all weird. It was not the usual <laughs> porn. So um, so I, I always looked for like weird stuff to jerk off to. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, glory holes. Um, but it was it was homemade stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to watch a lot of fisting stuff and I I was like, I, I cannot believe how a person can take a, mm -hmm. you know, whole arm or just a hand. Mm -hmm. Um, cause back then I was a total top. So I started dating, um, you know, my ex, um, and I was a total top back then, but I really wanted to feel, um, what they felt, you mm -hmm. know, the, you know, bottoms, um, cause only the face could, could tell me a lot of things. So I wanted to feel that. I wanted to, exp I wanted to experience that. Mm -hmm. So I started working on it. So I started sitting on toys every single day. Mm. And um, actually, my ex said, 
don't worry, it's going to take probably a year. Um, and I'm like, okay, now this is a challenge for mm. me. So I actually, it you, took three months. Jesus, you fast tracked that. Challenge. Yes. <laughs> so I was sitting on toys and I was like improving every, every week. I was um, going up, mm. up until I was able to take my first fist. Um, when it happened the first time, I said, why, why did I get into this? Because it was painful. Mm -hmm. You know, at the beginning, it is painful because I'm not getting, I'm not doing anything, any chemical stuff. So, of course, I was there the entire time. I was aware of mm -hmm. what I was doing. Um, so it was painful. But then once you get on it and you trust the person that you're playing with, um, it's all all good. Well, that's what it is. It's a, it's a level of trust, it's right? It's a level of trust. So yeah. let me ask you a question. Um, as a fister, mm -hmm. right? What does it feel like to be so deep inside of someone's body? There's a big percentage of people that um, do, you know, chemicals just to enhance yes. the, the experience. Either poppers or yeah, a little more. Exactly, okay. a little more than that. But um, I do appreciate whenever um, the bottom is or the top is actually... Um, a hundred percent aware of what they were what they are doing because mm -hmm. it's a, a hundred percent um you know uh, intertwined mm -hmm. is that the way you say it intertwined intertwined yeah, there yeah. you go intertwined um, or interconnect like you guys are yeah exactly building a bond yes yeah so it's like you know it's a very intimate experience and besides um yeah i, I would say that it's a very intimate yeah. experience just to be able to be inside of someone else you know, not only my penis, yeah, but also another part of me, oh, which is great. It's amazing. And besides, let me tell you, the first time I got fisted for the first time, mm -hmm. um, well, actually, it was like the third time because I could feel it, it was not painful anymore. Um, I said, if people, if people could only experience this, they they don't they have no idea what they're missing out on because, really yes okay. because the, the thing is that for males you know our g-spot is there so not up here <laughs> exactly <laughs> not up here it's I've there seen, it's right there i've seen you know some fisting porn mm, yeah i know uh, so, <laughs> oh, wow. so you know you're way past the g-spot at certain points yeah, yeah yeah but but it's there you know you're massaging mm -hmm. that that spot and you know the fullness of it it's it is too many things involved, mm -hmm. um, too many things going on at the same time. So it is mind blowing. It is a mind blowing experience for me. So do you Magical. recommend everybody? So do you recommend everybody get fisted once in their life? Yes, you do. Yes, okay. Absolutely. If they, you know, if you can't only experience that for the, you know, only once in your life, mm -hmm. you you should do it. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. It's probably going to take me like five years. <laughs> well, you know, it's a, it's work. Yeah. It's it's a muscle. So it's like yeah. you know. Uh, you don't get to build a body in just one day. Mm -hmm. It it's gonna take work. Yes. You are um, Venezuelan, yes, right from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been in the country for almost five years. Okay, uh, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what um, what was it like growing up uh, in Venezuela, um, and also growing up gay? Okay, so um. That's actually a very good question because um, the Venezuela I grew up in is not the same one that you can see now. It's a country in ruins, and which is very sad because it's a beautiful country. Um, I would recommend everybody to go mm -hmm. at least once in their life, but not now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The the Venezuela that I grew, that I grew up in was with, with good public education. Um, actually, the way my mom raised us was. Um, you know, cleaning houses and, um, you know, just housekeeping mm -hmm. other people, um, for other people. Um, we were, we're three boys. So, um, she basically had to, you know, it, she raised us as a single mom. Mm -hmm. So she had to be really tough on us. Actually, she did a great job because, um, the three of us don't do anything. Um, have never smoked a cigarette in our lives. We don't drink. We don't do anything. We have never done drugs. Um, and it was all always because she would always, she was very upfront with us. 
she would always say, this is what's going to happen if you do this. This is what's going to happen if you do this. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to do that. So um, also she taught us how to do everything, like cook, clean, everything. Mm-hmm. So she would, I love that because uh, she would always say, you have to learn how to do this because you don't know if the woman that you're, that you're going to find, you know, later on in the future Maybe she doesn't know how to do stuff and you will have to do it for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I Jokes love that. on her for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? but I love that yeah, because yeah, no. she was not, you know, the stereotypical uh, Latino mom. Mm-hmm. Um, Where a man's place is exactly. working and the woman's the one that takes exactly. care of it. Exactly. So she was exactly the opposite. Mm-hmm. She's like, you you know, you have to know how to do this. In fact, my two brothers are chefs. Um, oh, that's awesome. My, yeah, my oldest brother is a chef and my youngest brother is a pastry chef who is gay too. Yeah. Um, and I can cook. I'm a pretty good cook. Oh, yeah? Yes. And it was all because of her. Um, well, I'm a farm boy, too. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a farm. Campesino? Um, campesino. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> I'm originally actually from, from the second city, largest city in Venezuela, which is Valencia. But my family is from the countryside. So we would always go there. And we had a house there in the country. And my mom also um, harvests. So we would always there go there and um you know help her mm-hmm. do stuff there. Um so I grew up with animals. I love animals. And coming from a very conservative family, you know, a, it was a countryside. Mm. So just thinking about being gay was just um I, I couldn't I couldn't think of it. Mm-hmm. So I always knew there was something Not wrong, but there was something different about me than my brother, my oldest brother. We were only 11 months apart. So we basically were raised as twins. Mm -hmm. So everything was the same. Um, In fact, when we got girlfriends, um, we used to like, you know, go go out on a double date and stuff like that. In fact... (laughs) We would share girls. Oh, okay. yeah. So, like, oh yeah. Did you do this to her? Oh yeah, sure. I I want to do that. So things like that. Um. So I always knew there was something different about me, and but I didn't have the courage to mm-hmm. tell my mom. Um, I got involved in a relationship with a man. Oh, back in two thousand ten, I was I was graduating from university from my uh bachelor's degree and um i started seeing this this guy it was actually kind of a daddy um he was older than me and it was only fucking entirely um all good and in 2013 we got engaged Mm. he actually we met in venezuela but i didn't know he lived here Oh, in the States. In the States. Okay. Yeah. So I'm actually imported. <laughs> um, he brought me here. Okay. We got married. We were in a seven year relationship, um, three years legally married, and we had divorced. We got divorced in um October seventeenth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Actually separated on October seventeenth. Um so when when I got here to the States um, I decided to call my mom <laughs> and tell her. Mm. So she cried and, um, but she said, I always want you to be the same guy that you are, um, because you're a man mm-hmm. and that's what you, uh, what I want you to do, of co- what I want you to be. Of course, she was making reference to just not being all out and, you know, with wigs and stuff like yeah, that, which is, know, you know, throwing glitter and exactly, which stuff. is actually what they think you're going to be. And I'm, um, I've always been like this Mm -hmm. and it's, it's not acting. It's exactly who I am. And, um, but it was a very difficult decision to make, but I had to do it. Um, because I was already here and I was Mm going to get married. Mm -hmm. Actually, she had a very good relationship with my ex. Um, we went down to Venezuela like six times together. Um, I met his family too. And, we had a pretty good relationship, like family wise, like um, a family dynamic, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Um, so, in Venice, once going back to Venezuela, um, 
we were very close, you know, my, my brothers and I, um, in fact, my brothers are, I would say are my two best friends. Uh, they know everything I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and they say that they're proud of me because, um, they know who I am mm -hmm. as a person and they know that the decision that I made about making porn, I mean, doing porn and, um, it's because I knew what I was, what I was going to get into mm -hmm. now. Um, before doing it, actually, I asked them before. So they said they would respect me if I decided to do it. Um, the reason why I decided to do it was because I needed to move my family out of Venezuela. But we can talk about that later. Um, I'm anyway, very yeah. interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. A well, you know, because my, I, my family is Cuban. Okay. So I feel like without even having gotten into it, we already have some kind of... Uh, similar government yes. similar totally. idea towards mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. um but we will we'll touch on that okay. um what studios have you worked with oh yeah okay i have worked with uh falcon mm -hmm. for uh, i have done stuff for fisting central mm -hmm. i did i have done probably about 25 scenes for pride studios um i have done bait buddies um pop uh, bad puppy mm -hmm. Um, in Europe, I, I did Macho Factory, Crunch Boys, Pig Boy Ruben, um, uh, what else? Oh, Men Over 30, mm -hmm. um, Extra Big Dicks, <laughs> um, of, of course, Dark Alley, um, what else? No Treasure Island. <laughs> Not Treasure Island. Yeah. Actually, yesterday. Yeah, you popped your Treasure first... Island cherry. Yes. <laughs> you uh, did. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool, right? So you've met a lot of different personalities. Yes. Who has been your favorite porn star? Mm -hmm. Like, who has been who actually, you know, getting into this and having watched porn? Who's who starstruck you? Have you ever been starstruck by? So the thing a porn is that, um, I remember when I was younger, I used to uh, jerk off to Rocco Steel. Okay. Um, and. And then the first time I saw him, um, he was actually checking me out. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, That's always cool. And I was like, I was like, act normal, you know, mm -hmm. and act cool. He's over there, just pretend that he's not looking at you. And I was just, you know, being cool. But um, actually, I have a really, really nice relationship with him. I got to work with him, mm -hmm. and I have worked with him probably over three times mm -hmm. now. Um, and every time I've worked with him, it's, you know, a, a great experience. Cool. He's a great guy. He's a great, um, that's everything I have to say about him. He's, yeah. he's a great guy. Um, I'm working on getting him on the, po the podcast. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. We talked a little bit about it and we'll see mm. what happens. Nice. Yeah. No, he's a sweetheart. I he's worked with him a couple of times before, um, uh, before he blew up, like really, really blew up. Oh, nice. Um, so it's always fun. Yeah. To... And I mean, I can mention him. Um, and also in Europe, I got to meet the guys from Macho Factory, Jordi, who is the, he's the director for mm -hmm. Macho Factory. He is a sweetheart. He's just an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. Um, also Victor Rome. He's also another, um, sweetheart and, uh, Surge from Metro Factory. Okay. Yeah. Um, and all the guys from Metro Factory, Jenny Maggio, um, Andy Onassi, um, also Andy Starr. Yeah. Um, this guy from Orlando, uh, Twain, Twain, I don't remember his name right now. Twain. He's a black guy. He's a, he's a loving guy. Um, who else? Oh, Leo Green, um, Joe Gillis. Leo Green is actually, a, a really, really, really very close friend of mine in Madrid. Okay. Um, actually, in Madrid, I, I got to do a lot of things like touristy stuff because mm -hmm. he took me around in oh, his nice motorcycle. Oh, that's very, very nice. Very nice. Um, anyway, I got to meet a lot of people there. Um, you are a um, surreal artist? Is that what you mean? It's a realist. Exp surrealist. surrealist. Okay. Mm -hmm. So explain to me what a sur what's the difference between an artist and a surrealist artist. Like So a uh, surrealist surrealism is mm -hmm. a movement mm -hmm. right so um i can mention you some people that are kind of my reference like uh, dolly dolly bacon um, um monk um from 
Norway. Um, Bacon is from Ireland mm-hmm. and, and Delhi. So it's like that these people have put together pieces that have to do with reality, but it's a kind of a mix between reality and, and fiction mm-hmm. um, and fantasy. So you can you have the melting clock yes and, you know th- that's kind of a, a reference of, of that's of like the, the archetypal yes yeah of surrealism um i would say i'm a surrealist artist because i love putting together pieces that include both worlds a kind i think because a lot of people live in even though they're here you know they kind of fantasize about something mm-hmm. else and yeah. So, for instance, I did my first, very first piece um, of oil paint on canvas was a Medusa on on a stage. So it was, you know, the face of Medusa, mm-hmm. and then it was like a, a theater. Um, it was a pretty. I was very proud of that piece. Um, that's actually in Venezuela, oh. somewhere <laughs> in Venezuela. Um, but it is a combination of the, you know this fantasy with this reality of a theater and. It's pretty cool. So do you um do you continue? Yeah. Do you still paint? Oh yes, absolutely. And actually, that's um my the goal or the reason one of the reasons why I moved to DC. It's because the art scene in DC is pretty big, mm-hmm. and I want to continue that, and I want to do it um kind of in a more like, so uh, DC is a bigger artist. Yes. Uh, so hub. I, I was not looking. I didn't want to move to New York because um it's too crowded. And it's crazy. And it's um, too expensive. Well, DC is very expensive. Yeah, no, I know, I know. That <laughs> but, DuPont Circle. <laughs> yeah, that's where I live. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty pretty expensive. Yeah. But um, I was I was looking for a quieter city mm-hmm. and I I really want to build a nest from from my studio mm-hmm. there. So I'm I'm kind of building little by little my little my little thing, my little art studio there. So if but, your fan like if your fans or people wanted to see some of your art, where where could they go? now do you have anything online so or do you right have... now right now the only thing is that they can follow up on my instagram account okay um which is actually my real name i go by my real name there and it's ruben r-u-b-e-n-r-o-d is in david p is in paul a is in apple ruben rodpa okay that's my my name and um instagram it's actually kind of my pg-13 life Mm -hmm. it's not my porn life and it's my artist point of view Mm -hmm. too Mm -hmm. um so i do a lot of modeling there um you know for clothing brands and stuff like that and um but i'm planning to put all my artist you know stuff there cool well i gotta i gotta tell you you have an awesome head on your shoulders you come from good stock so thank your mother for that yeah thank my mom yeah (laughs) my mom Um, chris (laughs) uh I would love to get into the politics of Venezuela at the moment, but maybe maybe we leave that for another episode. That would be a whole day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like <laughs> I could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but we do have to uh limit it to about half an hour. Or so yeah. uh at least until I get a budget. And you know, honestly, guys, uh for those of you listening, if you enjoy what we do with the podcast. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on Budsprout, subscribe anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Um, and then also, um, Julian, at this moment, you know, give us, give us where people can find your stuff. Okay. Like Twitter and. Yeah. Know. So my Twitter handle is, um, as I said at the beginning, furry stud with a double F, F, furry, um, stud, F U R R Y, stud. Um, on Instagram, it's my real name, Ruben Rodpa, uh, Ruben R O D P A, and also on Facebook, you can find me. But on Facebook, it's kind of my friends and family. Mm-hmm. Um, even though you can send me any friend requests, yeah, stay, there up, stay off of Facebook. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, yeah, but that's basically where you can where you can find me. Um, and. And the content you produce. And the content I produce, I'm on Just for Fans. Um, just for Fans um, slash Furry Stud. Okay. With a double F as well. Yeah, I have a, there uh, over 200 videos, and all of them are pretty good quality, actually. I don't like those, you know, vertical videos shaky. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to put a lot of effort on creating some good content that people, you know, are, that is kind of, 
um, I mean, make people realize that they're not paying for anything. Mm -hmm. Like they're paying for good quality stuff. Yeah. So you know, I kind of put put my effort on. That. Well, I appreciate that as well. Thank you. <laughs> Because it is, it's it's anybody can pick up a camera and just shoot. Exactly. <laughs> it takes something else to like yeah, capture or something. Yes. You know, and put it together and make it look good. Exactly. So I absolutely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you so, so very much. Like no, I said, you know, you I've been trying to me. get you on for a minute, yeah. uh, trying to work with you for a minute. So I'm very happy thank that, that all of this happened in one yeah. week. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord, And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is demystifying gay porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Cheers.